Welcome to True and Unpolished, the podcast, a cusp culture production. Through this podcast, our intention is to uplift, inspire, and amuse. Let's get authentic. Hey, everybody, it's Lydia. And Nicole. And today we are talking about being intentional in times of chaos. Uh, You are, if you're listening to this, you probably are noticing that it is not Tuesday at noon, which is the time that typically we put out our podcast. And that is because it uh, has been a crazy couple of days. Uh, for me specifically, and Nicole has been very flexible with me in allowing us to do this uh, late uh, today. So you actually are going to be hearing this if you're listening on Tuesday. We actually just recorded just a little bit ago. So, uh, so here's what's happening. The recognition is that right now, the activities of daily living, like things that we kind of do um, almost by rote, we are having to put a lot more thought and effort into those things because we are living through a pandemic. And particularly here in Wisconsin, which is where Nicole and I are, uh, we are, uh, I think, the, uh, I hate to say the word worst, but we have the highest uh, increase in rate of COVID right now. So things here are particularly crazy. Uh, and yesterday for me included uh, uh, two trips to the school uh, with the intention of taking my children out because there's all of these kids apparently in the class that are awaiting test results and then our neighbors are. And uh, it was a day where I was trying to navigate and figure out, okay, what is, how can I be truly helpful to my kids? What is the highest good for us? Should I be taking them? Should I be getting them tested yet? You know, what's the thing to do? And in all of that, I got to such a place of kind of anxiety. Uh, And it wasn't, uh, I should say it this way, I wasn't consciously anxious. So in other words, I didn't realize that the anxiety was building and increasing uh, because I was just trying so hard to be present for these choices and decisions that I was making that by, you know, yesterday afternoon at about three, I had such pressure in my chest, like I was just sure that I had COVID, like I was, should I go test like right now? Uh, And, and what I recognize is that, you know, it was anxiety. And I have, I know that now uh, through the benefit of hindsight, because my husband said, are you going to go get tested? And I said, if I wake up tomorrow feeling like this, then I absolutely will, because I had such kind of pressure in my chest. And so what we recognize is that right now, all of the things that we do are requiring a lot more thought. And because of that, we're all at this emotional kind of overwhelm. I think that's kind of the norm for most people right now. And I will say this too. I talk to people, part of what I do uh, in my job uh, is have spiritual counseling sessions. So I have the benefit of talking to people Uh, and having calls each day where I can see that I am not the only one who's struggling. My family isn't the only family that's struggling because I am constantly talking to people uh, about how they're navigating this moment in this time. And there's this tendency to think that our struggles are exclusive to us. Like, oh, we are struggling Mm -hmm. because of the specifics of my life right now. And I will just say that in my experience, through talking with people, everyone is struggling right now to one degree or another. So we're all operating at, you know, uh, I would say at the, in our best moments with just a moderate overwhelm. <laughs> and <laughs> at our worst, we feel yeah. like an elephant is, is seated on our chest, squarely on our chest as I was yesterday. Is that your experience, Nicole? Yeah, yeah, and I, and I find it, with the way things have been going too, and just different, different um, ways I'm feeling it in my body. Yeah. Um, anxiety, you know, presents itself usually in myself, in my stomach. Yeah, me too. I get stomach aches and, you know, um, but now it's, it's different. I don't know if it's because it's different times, but, you yeah. know, I, I've been having different 
things that I feel, oh, that's the anxious part coming out in me. Yeah. And I wonder though, if it's not that it's different, it's that you are so conscious and aware now and mindful in your life that you are noticing things that maybe you didn't notice before in your body. Sure, that, that could be too. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's, I think that because of this moment, because we are having uh, to, to navigate in, you know, from a place of stress uh, and anxiety, it is really, really helpful to have some kind of structure. Like I am a person, and I just talked about this um, in my unity talk on Sunday. I am a person that I need structure. Like I don't like it. I don't want structure, but I also don't do well without structure. Like I need some kind of structure. And thankfully my kids are doing in-person instruction, at least for this moment. (laughs) And Hmm. that I didn't realize how much of my structure was based on their structure. Uh, And uh, so I do have that, which is nice, but I think that uh, it's helpful to have a framework. So for example, yesterday, when I had that day of overwhelm, it was really helpful for me to have this tool that I shared uh, last week uh, at Unity, and this is it. So I heard the Indian proverb that every human being is, a house with four rooms and the four rooms are the emotional room, the physical room, the spiritual room and the mental room. And that, you know, in the, in order to live a balanced life, you need to visit each one of these rooms every day. So I had the idea and I have now been implementing it for the past couple of days where I am, it's my intention it's my intention to be intentional is my intention (laughs) to make one intentional choice each day in each room. So for example, I will make one intentional choice in my physical room and kudos for me if I'm able to do more, but I can tell you that yesterday, one intentional choice in each room was absolutely sufficient. And, and what that does Making that decision means that in a year, you have made 1,460 intentional choices. And what, in my experience, my life experience is shaped by my intention. So, you know, before Nicole and I do every podcast, we stop and we take a breath and we pause and we set the intention to be truly helpful. Uh, I do that on Sundays when I talk and I do it in all of my calls before my calls and amazing things happen when you are intentional, just, just deciding that, mm, just deciding what something is for beforehand is what shapes it. And so this idea of being intentional in each room once a day It's so, for example, in the physical room, you could decide that like yesterday, my, my physical room intentional choice was I wanted to do my stairs goal because I have my, you know, my smart watch that tells me that I should be taking steps. Uh, And it tells me how many goals I had or how many goals. No, there's one goal for the stairs. And so I said, okay, today I will do my stairs goal. Like I totally took steps goal off of off of my plate yesterday because it wasn't going to happen. And so I said, okay, stairs goal, that's my intentional choice in the physical room. My intentional choice in the spiritual room was that I did my, I have a daily devotional um, that Marianne Williamson wrote. It's 365 days of miracles. And it's just like a short little paragraph that includes like a pause and kind of a prayerful intention. So I did that. So just check on the spiritual room, the mental room was a little bit more difficult for me yesterday. I'm a cerebral person, so I tend to be doing a lot in general there, but I decided that I was going to look something up with my son. Like he wanted to know (laughs) about stats for football. And so we looked up the information and I looked at the different stats. Uh, And so the idea is that doing this provides this structure and this framework so that when you're at this place of overwhelm, you don't, you know, you don't expect yourself to be overly physical or overly, overly spiritual or overly emotional. You just say, okay, I'm going to do one in each. 
What are your thoughts on that, Nicole? Have you done it yet? Since I, I, I love it. I, I'm wondering when, when you do it, is it, is it intended? Do you think to be just in moments of like overwhelm or is it like intended to do more than that? So no, so I will say, so I made it up. So it can be whenever we want. Sure. <laughs> Cause we're, I'm the author. So I officially give you permission, <laughs> <laughs> but I no, I think it's helpful to do even when you're not in overwhelm, it provides a structure and a framework. But for me specifically, I have a tendency, uh, especially because I have been practicing intention for so long and I have received the benefits and the fruits of my intentional labor, so to speak, that I get really down on myself when I'm not doing it. Cause I know it works, right? Yeah. So when I'm in a place of overwhelm, I, I having that structure is really, really helpful. Honestly, I have practiced intention for so long that it really is the way in which I operate. I'm, I tend to be intentional. Now, each room, eh, not so much. Cause I was, you know, for me, I am really, really comfortable in the mental room and I'm really, really com comfortable in the spiritual room. And the physical and emotional rooms are kind of my areas of growth. So for me, it's helpful. Oh, that's right, Nicole. So even not just in overwhelm, it's helpful for me to be balanced, right? And to not uh, over mm, correct in one area while neglecting another, like emotional yeah. is specifically one that that's I what I, to. yeah. When you were, when you were talking, my thought was that, um, like for me, physical is not something, I mean, I have a three-year-old and I run around with him and I, I'm yeah. not intentionally physical at all because yeah, yeah. I'm just exhausted um, yeah, from being yeah. just mom. Um, so that's something, you know, that's something that I could really work on. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, while, while I'm hearing you talk and explain this, I'm thinking, well, maybe I could just focus on that one every day. Sure. Because, because I'm pretty good at the other ones. Yeah. Um, more so. Um, but just make that like a daily goal is just to do one thing physical. And then in times of overwhelm is when I would really try to figure out the other ones. Yeah, I think that's great. Like, I think that you, everybody can, can do it um, in a way that makes sense for them. So Mm -hmm. So it, I, I, and I think that it's really helpful too, just to even become aware of which ones you're more comfortable with and which yes. ones you tend to do more. And the physical one, you know, it can be anything. It can be eight glasses of water. It right. can be, you know, taking a walk. It is just really the, the, the power is that it's an intentional choice. Like I'm going to intentionally uh, enter this room, take, uh, make some choice that is going to be consciously, I'm, I'm saying consciously choice. Yes. So make one conscious choice to do something that I know is a benefit to each one. And I think in the emotional room, it doesn't have to be necessarily positive emotion. It's just in the arena of feelings. And, and that could be setting a boundary. It could be setting an expectation for, you know, your spouse. Uh, you know, I expect you to be, um, to thank me when I do something for you, whatever it is. It's, you know, I think that in the emotional arena, yesterday, my emotional one was that, you know, my youngest who is autistic and he's been having, you know, some big challenges right now. And, you know, he will get really, really big emotion all of the sudden, like it's just kind of monotone. And then all of a sudden it's kind of a meltdown. And yesterday he had one last night and, you know, I could feel that it was happening. I heard it from the other room because uh, it was between he and my husband. And so I went in and I laid down on his bed with him and I said, you know, how are you feeling? I don't know. He said, I said, I am feeling sad today. And I just talked to him about how we were feeling. And so that was, you know, the emotional room. There's physical, what did I say? Physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. 
right? Yes. Oh, and the other component of this that I think is really important is we, we tend to believe that our happiness or our joy is dependent upon an outside occurrence. Like something happens and it makes us feel happy. Something happens and I feel joyful. And joy and happiness are practiced. They are things that you that you do intentionally. So if you intentionally practice joy each day, and I, my idea was all you have to do is have one of the intentional choices be a joyful one. So if it's the emotional one, you could listen to a song that makes you happy and sing, you know, or uh, if it's uh, in, you could watch a funny movie that could be an emotional one too. So I really think that it's important to add that component of practicing happiness and practicing joy too. And you can easily incorporate it into one of the other rooms. Sure. I think with, with me in the, I don't really struggle in the emotional room when it comes to me and my myself, my emotions, I struggle portraying my emotions to mm -hmm. others. Yeah. Communicating um, them. Sure. Yeah. So, so for me, it's not, uh, the focus isn't necessarily internal as more as bringing the internal external. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, okay. giving it voice, which is, yeah. I mean, yes, I totally agree. And I think that it's important to recognize that right now, there's a lot of emotional overwhelm because of mm -hmm. all, because we're navigating this really difficult moment with a pandemic and a really um, contentious uh, presidential election in this country. Uh, and there's lots of social justice issues happening right now. So any one of those is overwhelming and emotionally exhausting, but adding all of it and then you, you know, recognize that you're still also having to navigate, you know, the daily activities life. of your life. Uh, it's a lot. And so I think that we need to give ourselves kind of credit right now. Like this is, uh, you know, we need to be gentle on ourselves. And we, and I really do think that we, we can do so much better uh, when we recognize that we think that the problem is us. Like we believe that the specifics of us and our life and our relationships, that is what is stressful or that is what is hard. And the truth is every single person right now is navigating hard stuff. And, you know, there's such benefit in recognizing that, you know, so such great coming together, you know, and such grace we can give to each other when we absolutely know that everybody else is having a hard time. Like we don't even have to guess if they're having a hard time. Like, yes, they are. You know, it could be a really good day. could be a really good moment, but in general, we're all, you know, having these moments of overwhelm. So any kind of structure we can give to ourselves, I think it's helpful. You know, anything that can provide us with some kind of framework for a balanced life in which you take care of yourself mm -hmm. and that's what the four rooms is and so mental emotional spiritual physical one intentional choice each day in those rooms and have one of them be a joyful have a joyful component to it uh, because you know we practice joy too so this is free everybody take this 1400 and, and i mean think about that Think about the power of that in a year's time, doing one a day in each room is 1,460 intentional choices. That, that can't not change your life. That can't not have an overwhelming impact mm -hmm. on the experience of your life. Absolutely. Can I just tell you a little bit about, you know, <laughs> yesterday was so insane. I mean, trying to, and, and also work at the same time, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what is the best thing to do? How do I keep everybody safe? Like, is it better to have them, you know, be more at risk, but also, you know, in school being taught by educators and having the social component, you know, what, and then my, our neighbors who you guys, I've talked about them on this uh, podcast before, but we're really, really close to them. 
and I've watched their kids grow up and our kids are always playing together and they're about to move. And so these are the final two weeks of them being our neighbors. And since we've lived here, like, you know, it's been those kids all together. And so they are now in quarantine because they went and, you know, took a test and they're waiting on results. And so I, part of one of the things that I was weighing out was, should I just go ahead and do the test so that we can be in quarantine together? Because I was, you know, having, uh, I was catastrophizing about how, oh, these are the last two weeks and now the kids aren't going to have each other for the last two weeks. And shouldn't we just go ahead and quarantine now too at the same time? And, uh, you know, it was, it's just, it was so much yesterday and I'm really grateful for, and I would, you know, encourage everybody, all of us. I am really grateful for the relationships in my life because I had, you know, at Cusp Culture, which is Mary and Christy and Nicole and I, uh, Nicole had the brilliant idea of setting an intention each week for each of us as individuals and us as a collective of Cusp Culture to have an intention call Monday mornings. So Monday morning, 9 a.m. this yesterday, we had our first one where uh, as a group where we were just setting our intention for the week and, you know, just took five minutes together to do that. Uh, and I'm really grateful for the relationships in my life because, every, you know, the people that I have close connections with give me grace in moments like yesterday, you know, and, and that reminds me too, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I have so, uh, and Christy actually shared this post with me and it was a blog post by this woman who said, you know, I disappear was the title of it. And it is, and she sent it to me because it's exactly me. It's what I always say, where like on social media, I'll be really active and then I'll just stop because I need to go inward. I need to be quiet. I need to step away. And, you know, people wonder if I'm okay and they wonder you know, if, if I need something or they worry, you know, those kinds of things. And this woman was, she made this really great point. She said, you know, we have, you know, kind of become entitled with one another, like, because we're so accessible, like we feel like we are entitled to having connection with our people that we're connected to all the time, you know? And I, I just, it's just not the way it certainly isn't the way I operate. And I really think that it's helpful for us to have boundaries around that, recognize when we need some silence, when we need some quiet, and then take that and, you know, and communicate to the people in your life, like, look, this is a part of me. I'm going to take time for myself sometimes. It's not, you know, it is not indicative of how I feel about you or our relationship. It is just something that I will do to take care of me. And I encourage you to do the same. And then I also did the safe word. Like, did I tell you guys about this? I might not have, but I told, I was navigating something tricky and I uh, sent a message to the cusp gals. And I said, look, yes, you're right. Cause they, cause we're all highly intuitive too. So we can, we pick up on each other anyway. And so, uh, yes, you're right. I'm navigating something right now that's challenging and I need to go inward and I want to adopt a safe word policy. So when I say this safe word, you will know that I love you, I care about you, and I need to go inward because I'm navigating something tricky that I'm not ready to talk about. And the safe word, everybody, is Miley Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, you know, develop a safe word with your peeps. You know, when I say the safe word, it it means that there's a moment, everybody, and I need to take it. And that, see, that wasn't that tangential, right? Because we're talking about overwhelm, right? I do it every day. I, I mean, I know you know, if I don't answer my phone, I'm usually resting. Yes. If, yes. Every day for an hour or two, um, I usually do text my mom and dad and say, I'm going to shut my phone off. And, and Adam, when he's at work, like, I'm going to shut my phone off. I'm going to rest. And I either take a nap or paint or read yeah. a book or something, yeah. do something nice with Austin or, you know, whatever I'm inspired to do in that moment. But I just disconnect from my phone because I'm, I'm on it constantly. Yes, and I, yeah. I do, I do want to be one of those people that if you have something you need help with, like, I want to be there. I want to help. Yeah, you. Sure. 
and and now I have the I have people in my life where I know are not taking advantage of that because that yeah. wasn't always true um, right. in my life. Um, so I do want to be available because things happen quickly. And yeah. just I talked to you this morning, you may need, you know, you may need something this afternoon. And I do want to be available, but I also value myself to shut my phone off and step away. And it just is what it is. Well, isn't it interesting though, that, you know, I mean, think about it before we had landlines, no cell phone, we're growing yes. up, we had landline, you know, there was such a thing as, you know, I'm not home <laughs> where you don't answer the call. And now we've entered into this time where not only is that not possible, you literally have to say, hey, I'm shutting off my phone. Because there's this expectation that because you have this cell phone, because you have uh, social media, because you really are at a fingertip away all the time that you should be available all the time. It's just not true. And I know we're getting off on, on a conversation that I like to uh, soapbox about, but I do, I do think that part of the overwhelm and part of the way that you can, you know, visit and be intentional and an intentional choice about your emotional room is recognizing that, you know, there are times where you, um, it's helpful to communicate how you are feeling to someone. And there are times where it's helpful not to communicate at all emotionally and to just have some breathing space around it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we want to leave you with is to say that, you know, it's a moment where a lot, lot, a lot is going on and we're navigating a lot and we're all doing a really great job. And when we're not, we're doing a really great job of doing a horrible job. Mm -hmm. And that is okay. It is okay not to be okay. And, you know, I wish for you the kind of people in your life that I have in mine who are loving and supportive and also respectful of boundaries when I'm overwhelmed. So that is my wish for you. You have been listening to True and Unpolished, the podcast. Let's see what happens next. 